Dear students, now we are going to discuss characteristics of TE and TEM waves in rectangular waveguide. Propagation constant, phase shift constant, attenuation constant, cutoff frequency, cutoff wavelength, phase velocity, group velocity and wave impedance. These all are the important characteristics of electromagnetic waves in waveguides. Okay. So before going to derive the characteristics, let's discuss the important assumptions in this rectangular waveguide. We have already derived the electromagnetic field configurations for this rectangular waveguide in the previous lecture video. So in that, we have assumed one value that is H square. In order to determine the electromagnetic field configurations in rectangular waveguide, we need to make an assumption H square is equal to gamma square plus omega square mu epsilon that is also equal to A square plus B square. Here A is nothing but N pi by B, B is equal to M pi by A. Here A represents the width of the rectangular waveguide, B represents the height of the rectangular waveguide. Here this N and M both are representing integer values. It also defines the mode value. Okay. So next we are going to use these two assumptions. Okay. First we are going to derive the propagation constant. Here we can take this H squared value that is equal to gamma squared plus omega squared mu epsilon that is also equal to A squared plus B squared. From this expression we can get the propagation constant value gamma. So here we can keep this gamma squared and move this omega squared mu epsilon to this right hand side as a minus. So here gamma squared is equal to a squared plus b squared minus omega squared mu epsilon. Then we can take the square root on both the sides. We can get the propagation constant value as square root of a squared plus b squared minus omega squared mu epsilon. Then we can substitute the values of a and b here. Okay. So then the propagation constant is equal to square root of m by by a the whole square n by by b the whole square minus omega square mu epsilon. So this is the formula of the propagation constant. Do you all understand this concept? So in this concept the frequency is playing a vital role. So at particular frequency that is the cutoff frequency this gamma value becomes 0. Okay. At cutoff frequency the gamma value becomes 0. So we are going to analyze two conditions. One is if the frequency is less than the cutoff frequency. If the frequency is greater than this cutoff frequency. The next one is attenuation constant. Here we have to consider the condition frequency is less than cutoff frequency. At very low frequencies that is f is less than cutoff frequency no wave propagation is carried out. No wave propagation is carried out why because at low frequency here this omega value is negligible then we can have the term gamma is equal to gamma is nothing but alpha plus j beta correct. It consists of attenuation constant as well as phase shift constant that is equal to square root of from the previous expression we can write m by by a the whole square plus n by by b the whole square minus omega square mu epsilon but at very low frequencies we have to simply eliminate this value then we can get only the real term if it is a real term it represents only the alpha content not this imaginary value so here this imaginary becomes 0 ok so here alpha is the attenuation constant the entire wave is attenuated therefore there is no wave propagation here the attenuation constant is given as square root of m by by a the whole square plus n by by b the whole square so this is the expression for attenuation constant similarly we can find out the value of this phase shift constant. For this we can consider the second condition. If the frequency is greater than the cutoff frequency that is at high frequency range. 
here the propagation constant becomes the imaginary value then the wave will be propagating in the waveguide so here we can get the propagation constant expression from the first one that is square root of m by by a the whole square plus n by by b the whole square minus omega square mu epsilon so here this propagation constant consists of both alpha and beta so here we do not have this real term we are having only this imaginary term for making this as an imaginary term we are going to take minus as a common one within this expression if i am going to take this minus as a common one then this term becomes omega square mu epsilon that is plus omega square mu epsilon this term becomes minus m by by a the whole square here it is minus n by by b the whole square as we all know that square root of minus 1 is nothing but what j so we can write like this so here we can get beta is equal to square root of omega square mu epsilon minus m by by a the whole square minus n by b the whole square so this is the phase shift constant value we are going to use this value in further derivation okay it is very important value next one is cut off frequency as we have already discussed the frequency at which the propagation constant is equal to 0 is called as cut off frequency so at this cut off frequency gamma becomes 0 so here we can consider the assumption h squared is equal to gamma squared plus omega squared mu epsilon so here gamma becomes 0 at f is equal to fc condition right then this term becomes omega c squared mu epsilon here it is 0 from this we can get the value of this omega c squared by moving this omega epsilon to this side as a denominator then we can take the square root value on both the sides here omega c is equal to h by square root of mu epsilon omega c is nothing but 2 pi fc correct then we have to move this 2 pi to this side then we can get fc is equal to 1 by 2 pi square root of mu epsilon here h is nothing but what square root of m by by a the whole square plus n by by b the whole square as we know that h square is equal to what a square plus b square a square is nothing but what m by by a the whole square here it is n by by b the whole square correct so here if you are going to take the square root then we can get the value like this so this is the important formula of cut off frequency fc is equal to 1 by 2 pi square root of mu epsilon into square root of m by by a the whole square plus n by by b the whole square in case of air filled waveguide material we can say this cut off frequency fc is equal to 1 by square root of mu epsilon is nothing but the velocity for air filled material it is represented as the velocity of light divided by 2 pi into square root of m by by a the whole square plus n by by b the whole square you will understand this for air filled this 1 by square root of mu naught and epsilon naught is nothing but velocity of light okay so next we are going to analyze the cutoff wavelength the wavelength at cutoff frequency is known as cutoff wavelength it is denoted as lambda c so that is equal to the ratio of velocity to the cutoff frequency so here we can simply substitute the value of this cutoff frequency and here we can replace this 1 by square root of mu epsilon as the velocity in the next step we can move this 1 by 2 pi to this numerator value and 1 by square root of mu epsilon as velocity then velocity and velocity both can be cancelled then we can get lambda c is equal to 2 pi by square root of m by by a the whole square plus n by by b the whole square so here this pi value is a common one in both the terms we can take it outside square root of pi squared is here pi correct then we can simplify this then we can get the cutoff wavelength as 2 by square root of m by a the whole square plus n by b the whole square okay so this is the cutoff wavelength expression okay so next we are going to derive the guided wavelength okay 
So the guided wavelength can be obtained by using the formula 2 pi by beta. So here lambda g is equal to 2 pi by the beta value that is phase shift constant expression we have already derived right. We can use that expression here square root of omega squared mu epsilon minus m by by a the whole squared minus n by by b the whole squared. Then we can represent this value here minus is a common one we can take it outside then we can write m by by a the whole squared plus n by by b the whole squared right. This is nothing but h squared. So at cutoff frequency this h squared can be written like this omega c squared mu epsilon correct. At cutoff frequency what will happen this h squared is equal to omega c squared mu epsilon. We have to substitute that value here. So in the next step we are going to take this omega squared mu epsilon as a common one from the square root. So if you are going to take this value as a common one we can take it as a square root of omega squared mu epsilon outside. So here omega squared becomes omega into square root of mu epsilon and this term becomes 1 minus omega c by omega the whole square because here we are going to divide this value with this value right. So omega epsilon sorry mu epsilon mu epsilon both can be divided. Do you all understand this one? So here this omega is nothing but what? 2 pi f correct square root of mu into epsilon here it is 1 minus fc by f the whole square here we can say omega c divided by omega is equal to what 2 pi fc by 2 pi f so here 2 pi 2 pi cancel that can be written like this then we can divide these two values here 1 by square root of mu epsilon that is nothing but velocity okay then we can get the guided wavelength is equal to velocity by f into square root of 1 minus fc by f the whole square. As we all know that lambda is equal to what? That is velocity by frequency. Then this term can be written like this. Velocity by f is nothing but the lambda. So guided wavelength is equal to lambda by square root of 1 minus fc by f the whole square. So here fc is the cutoff frequency f is the operating frequency this lambda depends on this operating frequency do you all understand this concept so next one is phase velocity the phase velocity of a propagating wave in the waveguide is given as the ratio of omega to this beta then we have to substitute the value of this beta that is square root of omega square mu epsilon minus m by by a the whole square minus n by b b the whole square as we all know that h squared is equal to m by by a the whole square plus n by by b the whole square at cutoff frequency this value is equal to omega c squared mu epsilon we can substitute this value as omega c squared mu epsilon then this phase velocity vp is equal to omega divided by square root of omega squared mu epsilon minus omega c squared mu epsilon Correct. So then we have to take this omega squared mu epsilon as a common one from the square root. Then we can get the value omega by omega square root of mu epsilon into square root of 1 minus omega c by omega the whole square. Then this two term divided each other. Then 1 by square root of mu epsilon is nothing but velocity. We can get the phase velocity is equal to velocity divided by 1 minus fc by f the whole square for air filled waveguide we can take this 1 by square root of mu epsilon as the velocity of light that is 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second so this is the formula of phase velocity using this formula we can solve some problems okay the next one is group velocity group velocity can be obtained by taking the differentiation of this omega and beta. So here we know the value of this beta that is square root of omega square mu epsilon minus m by by a the whole square minus n by by b the whole square. So this term can be written like this omega square mu epsilon minus h square that is also equal to omega c square mu epsilon. So whatever we have already discussed correct we can use the same steps okay. In this one mu epsilon is a common one we can take it outside. So beta is equal to square root of 
mu epsilon into square root of omega square minus omega c square. The square root can be written like this. The whole power 1 by 2. In the next step, we are going to take the differentiation of this beta with respect to omega. If we are going to differentiate this beta with respect to omega, then we can get square root of mu epsilon into omega squared minus omega c squared the whole power minus 1 by 2 because we are going to take this 1 by 2 first and then minus 1. Okay, while taking the differentiation, we are going to reduce the power, right? So, here we can get minus 1 by 2 and here this omega can be written as into 2 omega. Then this 2 and 2 both can be divided. We can get the value as omega square root of mu epsilon divided by. Here the whole power is minus 1 by 2. Minus 1 by 2 means we can write the square root in the denominator. Correct? So this is the value of d beta by d omega but we want to get the group velocity as d omega by d beta. Then we can just reciprocate this fractional values. Then we can get the answer as square root of omega square minus omega c squared by omega into square root of mu epsilon. So, here we can further simplify this by taking this omega outside. Then we can get omega into square root of 1 minus fc by f the whole square divided by omega into square root of mu epsilon. Omega omega cancel. This 1 by square root of mu epsilon is nothing but velocity. Then we can get the group velocity as velocity multiplied with square root of 1 minus fc by f the whole square. Do you all understand this? This is also an important formula. So if you are going to multiply this phase velocity and group velocity, we can get v squared as the answer. This is the relation between phase velocity and group velocity. Similarly, we can get the relation between cutoff wavelength and guided wavelength like this, okay?